Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of The Nosebleeds. He's Jason. And he's Randy, and we're coming to you from three floors below the octagon with a show that's gonna take a new look at some of the most insane moments in UFC history. Now, we all know that the UFC has become a juggernaut in the sports and entertainment world, a dominant force. Like Tank Abbott at a Golden Corral. I've never oh. seen an entire buffet tap out before. But it wasn't always that way. That's right. The early days of the UFC were weird, wild, and unpredictable. Like Tank Abbott at, uh, oh, I don't know, Name any restaurant. And we love that weirdness. So on today's episode, we're gonna dig deep into the UFC Fight Pass archives, back to the place where it all began. UFC 1, 1993, Denver, Colorado. A town that's a mile high. With a population today that's a mile higher. Mushrooms legal. Now before we take you back out there, you gotta watch out for this. Watch out for how much announcer Bill Wallace has trouble announcing. He mispronounces words, he gets names wrong, he belches on camera, and he refers to a boxer as a boxing person. He's like Snoop Dogg announcing the Golden Globe nominees. Also watch out for boxer Art Jimerson's puzzling equipment choice. Now, we don't want to say he was unprepared, but he set back the sport of boxing single-handedly. Even Michael Jackson was like, put on another glove. And then he invited kids to a sleepover at an abandoned amusement park. Michael, not Art Jimerson. And with that, we take you back to 1993 and, and UFC 1. Porn font. We got ourselves a porn font. Uh-oh, this is how the ring started. Nice banner. Is this a fight or an ad for a generic detergent? Well, that is Mr. Clean and Jerk. Is he teabagging Norway? Mm -hmm. We're live from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. We are. The weatherman is warning local residents to brace themselves for a huge snowstorm. Nothing you want more for an indoor event than a weather report. Taking place indoors at the What part of Denver should we show? The darkest part. Landmark martial arts event. Eight of the deadliest fighters in the world. Where are they? A double tree conference room? All the best gyms have drop tile ceilings. Eight of the deadliest fighters in the world. And this stepdad. And this middle-aged runaway. And Bib from Belle Bib DeVoe. And finally we meet your dad's friend from work. Super heavyweight kickboxing Kick champion. Eight now he's dropping a deuce on Greenland? Atlas dumped. battle where anything can happen and probably will. Don't be so sure about it. Welcome to the first of four debates. Never seen before. The ultimate fighting challenge. Robert Durst? Hello, I'm <gasps> Bill Wallace and welcome to McNichols. Oh, did he just McNichols burp on camera? Dursty. Denver, Colorado. Along with me is Purple Bale. shirt, wide open. He's either a magician or a cokehead. So a magician. To where they're having different fights, different types of How'd they get Jim Brown? It was the mid-90s. OJ Simpson was booked. Excuse me. In the process of being booked. Jim Brown, what do you think? Jim Brown, you've never fought MMA and you're retired from football. What's your opinion here? Mike Tyson, I've been around the greatest NFL, NFL players. Can't wait to hear guys. this list. Dick Butkus, uh, 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 Sam Huff, all of those guys. Solid but list. I'll tell you, they could not last in this ring. Would you do it? Would I do it? You mean yes. when I was in my prime? No. Right, I wouldn't do it. Oh, come on. <laughs> it takes thing. years oh, to get this kind of chemistry. Just remember, all you have to do is climb over the ropes. There Here's are the no ropes. It's a cage. They They've trained for years. They're champions. They know things that nobody knows. Like where Ray Lewis put his white suit. With me also. Oh, now, come on. In the ring now is Brian Kilmore. Brian, what do you think about? Well, I'll tell you what, Bill. Kill you more. You mean kill me. Event, Where are his no and friends? I don't know why it's such an original event. Look no further than this ring. It's not a ring at all. It's an octagon. Eight sides. Got a right. fence here. So Blue no ropes. Give, no rings. He got some padding. He got some padding. What is there padding? You want to get a shot of this mat. It's kind of soft. The boxers are talking Hon, about... Hon, what shoe should I wear tonight? Just your most sensible loafers. The about. one with tassels? Sure. One inch vert. Nice hops. Exciting. Only two way out, and not two ways out, and not until this thing is over. No, you said it right the uh, first time. Kill more, kill me, whatever. Else. I'm gonna get out of here before it starts. Gotta go. Well, that so hooker's not gonna bury herself. Who's fighting, and the systems they'll be fighting with. The first fight will be Gerard Jardo against. Taylor Tooley. Nope. Now we have a super Not even close. When they say fight uh, the, card, uh, they mean bracket. Out. Well, the first rule of fight card is, is turn it into a bracket. Leg kicks. Tyler is Tyler. 110 pounds. The third fight will be Royce Gracie, who is you a mean Hoist? world champion, against R. Jimerson, who is a boxing person. Boxing Brad person? A person who boxes? If only we had a term for that. Shoot fighting also does some wrestling, also does some taekwondo movements. Taekwondo? You mean taekwondo. Either way, this match is going to end up in a tay. Who told you that? Ty Diggs? No, Tay Burrell. Also, Robotai. 
Bill having a stroke live on air. Against Tully Tully. And no. The fighters are hey, it's Grandma's drapes. Do they match the carpet? Is he letting his merch yeah, guy walk him to the octagon? Yeah, someone's got to hold the non-existent ropes open for him, right, Bill? Looks like he's ready to go to me. You can make 50 Jim Brown hats out of that rope. To our norm from Los Angeles. Yeah. Way to keep it vague, Jim. There's a line. We know what happens in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Softcore porn. A lot of things can be going on in your mind when you're walking up to the ring there. Well, that's a long walk. You have to realize that's about 75 feet and... Uh, 75 feet is not a long walk. Yeah, 75 feet is about 25 yards. Or one of Jim Brown's shortest runs. Wonder if he's going to climb over or under the rope. What's the over-under on the under-over? Why is the kid from Rookie of the Year wearing a towel? Now near the ring would be Gerard Jardot from the Netherlands. Who's a savat I've seen less smoke in Seth Rogen's pottery studio. Gerard is very strong with his legs, very strong. Buff kick. Captain he's Kangaroo he's leading the way. Technique. Captain Kangaroid. Very strong. But is he strong? Well, he certainly Look. looks pretty neat. Looks like he's ready. Yes, Why? Because he stole the hotel and washcloth? Most people will take their tops off, will be topless simply because... A woman is topless. To a man is shirtless. He looks so, like he's dressed for a destination tumble. wedding in the Ozarks. And I'll just put this here. We spoke Whoa, weird wave. I thought he was from Amsterdam, not Berlin. Tell me you didn't like Yentl without telling me you didn't like Yentl. Maybe he was just trying to hile a cab. Ladies and gentlemen. Low rent Joe Buck, Joe 75 cents. The first match of tonight's ultimate fighting championship. Why is he yelling? And where's his goddamn collar? Fighting out of the red corner. Rich Coins, not completely off book yet. Don't look up. I said don't look up. He's up. He's down. He's up. He's down. Holder of the European French Savat Boxing Champion title for three years in a row. The Dutch Karate Champion for eight consecutive years with a record of 27 and 4. Gerard Gerdo. Please don't wave. Oh, dear God, do not wave. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Honolulu. Yeah, go ahead and walk right through the shot, buddy. The Pacific tonight, free from the weight of our next challenger. Roasted. Two, and tipping the scales at an incredible 420 pounds. You think he juices? Does gravy count as juice? This three-year veteran of the Makuchi Cheetah class. Maybe men can be topless. With a magnet, you can move that goatee to the top of his head. Again, not his name. Dear God, please tell me he's wearing a skort. I think it's about ready to start. I think I'd be pretty nervous if I were in there with somebody that large. I think his knees just tapped out. Well, yeah, but also... Freeze somebody... it. This looks like a battle between two people who live under a pier. Who's this guy? Yeah, did he get lost on his way back from the bathroom and wind up in the ring? Maybe he's the ref's trainee. Like a new server at Fuddruckers. And look at Gerard. He's got the posture of a man at Jiffy Lube who's been told he has to replace all four tires. What is taking so long? There are supposed to be no rules. Just no groin shots. Rule. No eye gouges. Rule. And no biting. Rule. Wait, no biting? How's he supposed to get hard? I think there'll be a lot of stalking. I like that movie, Look Who's Stalking. I like Look Who's Stalking, too. The babies were more relentless. Okay, it's on. Kathy, what do you think? Whoa. Wow. When a foot hits your eye from a thin Nazi guy, that's Sabate. Kicked him in the face when he was on the ground. Can't do that anymore. Like rubbing one out on a work Zoom, right, Jeffrey Tubin? I don't think he wants to stop. The Matt Lauer story. Who was he in The Sopranos? Uncle Refi? Can we get some unqualified people to take a look at this guy? What about you, Elder Barge? And just gonna put my hand on the top of his head here, and yeah, in my professional opinion, he's good. He should be ready. And I'll just put my hand on his head too, for no good medical reason. When was the last time you saw your doctor wearing a snapback hat? They stopped the match, I believe. Is there an annoyed doctor who looks like Max Kellerman in the house? Oh, thank God you're here and upset. It took longer to get a doctor than it did to fight. 
When I was little, you got a quarter. That was crazy. The fact that he kicked Thule's tooth out after like 12 seconds? No, the fact that Gerard walked in with an entourage of one. Yeah. I don't even know if Captain Kangaroid was supposed to be there or if Gerard got stuck behind him in the hallway and couldn't get around him. Me either, but he definitely needed like seven more guys in his crew. I don't even know how you'd find those guys. Oh, I do. Before me, no one had an entourage. Who am I? Who the fuck are you? I'm Duncan Bidwell. I'm an entourage agent. I'm building entourages from the ground up, and I'm the best. So I started in the PBA. You think those balls wash themselves? And then I went over to Bieber's camp. I can tell you for a fact that those balls do not wash themselves. Right over here, this is uh, Nate Diaz's entourage. I put seven guys in there. Here's the crazy part. My guys, they're not even from Stockton. This guy's from Pittsburgh. This guy right here, he's from Detroit. That's my fucking mailman. It's like, have you ever seen that movie 50 Feet from Stardom? Yeah. yeah. Great fucking movie. This dude's from Tulsa. Merch guy didn't exist before me. Kid holding up the belt, I gave birth to that kid. I've created more low paying jobs for unskilled workers than Cold Stone Creamery. What is this, what are you doing? I was making a point. No, you know what? Fuck it up. I'll keep it. I really love this drum. Next year, moving up to water. But I moved up to Airhorn, so no big deal. I'm a dentist. I just love working with intense people. After all my success building entourages for the UFC, I've decided to build entourages for regular people. I mean, juggling three kids is hard. And what's even harder is that I wasn't getting any respect at school board meetings whenever I'd try to bring up new business. I just felt like I wasn't being heard, you know? Yep, shh, mommy's talking. So, that's why I called Duncan. Yeah, so me and Shanks, we went on down there to back the school night with Pat, and we shook shit up, boy. She was right, too. That motherfucking carpool line need to be two lanes. Yeah, man, who's in charge of the motherfucking cones? Duncan taught me that if you have someone in your crew that looks like they've choked out a cop or rolled a bank truck or trafficked exotic animals, people are more likely to listen to your initiatives. I mean, how do you think my daughter sold 800 boxes of Girl Scout cookies? All tagalongs. <laughs> That's intimidation, dog. <laughs> oh, crazy. Wanna know why I'm still relevant? It's not brain science. No. It's because I'm always involving the entourage game. Take my latest invention, the no man. Just a dude on your crew whose only job is to say no. For instance, should I go take this Perkins hostess over to that church parking lot? No, tiger. I mean, yeah, the no man's gonna cost you some money, but at the end of the day, no man's gonna save you some money, no? You have a no-man? Fuck no. You know what I think Duncan should do next? Stop putting his mailman in violent situations? Yes, and entourages for referees. Hold up, you talking about ref entourages? Oh, you know I am. Can you imagine Herb Dean rolling five deep ringside? Actually, I can, because that dude is a player. Don't touch it. So close. Mm. I'm not. All right, let's head back out to Denver and the cranial chop suey that is Bill Wallace's brain. Royce Gracie, who is the world champion jiu-jitsu player. He's not just a jiu-jitsu player, he crushes a lot. Everybody. Of all the eight fighters, Royce is the last. I thought we were calling him Royce. Entourage or conga line that's gone off the rails? Most fun human centipede ever. Bill, I think we probably have half of Brazil here tonight. Half of Brazil? This isn't even a half full Fogo de Chao. Now the ring will be Art Jimison. And his big band. Ranked WBF boxer in the world. Light heavyweight division. Ooh, Fox generic strip Vegas, club music. We've got Amber on the main stage. Dominique on the bar. And Jimerson in the octagon. Is by well, at least we're getting a good shot of his face. It's kind of ironic that, uh, that Hoist Gracie is going to wear his judo top. By top, you mean his gi. Yeah, judo top is Carrot Top's cousin. Is Jimerson only wearing one glove? He's down a glove. Like when the Yankees had to start Gary Sanchez at catcher. A front leg as he uses, I think, a... Always good to telegraph which hand will do all the punching. This is why you never pack when you're drunk. 
Let's give Art some credit. He's wearing two shoes. And Gracie isn't wearing any. So in the shoe department, Jimerson's up to nothing. Self-defense person? You mean a martial artist? And he can also get his opponent to be real wary of that kick. You could hit once or twice in the knee there. That really hurts. Hey, less thinking, more punching. Brazilians always say, if you have a good clinch, you have good jiu-jitsu. They're not booing the fighters. Lou Diamond Phillips just walked in. They're booing him. A little bit worried here. There it is. There's Eric. And he's on the ground. He's up, hose down. Position. And that's exactly where the jiu-jitsu man wants to be. He's well, this is over. That opponent, what do you mean? He can grab him with his one boxing glove. Oh, wait. Ah, UFC won before anyone knew how bad it was to be in full mount. I love art shoes. Are those the Nike give-ups? No, they're air tap-outs. Oh, the Antonio Browns. Mm -hmm. This is like when your kid throws a tantrum at the mall. No, we are not getting a guinea pig or a cookie cake. Another minute of this beatdown, and he's going to be abstract, Art Jimerson. Folks! Remember when Jim Thorpe was on this broadcast? It was Jim Brown. Well, it's been so long, I forgot which Jim it was. What's that move? I think it's the honeymoon guard. He's, he's tapping, tapping. He's, he's tapping. tapping. He's goddamn Gregory Hines doing Morse code while opening a keg of Modelo. He's tapping. I wish we could talk to Art Jimerson and find out what he was thinking because boxing with one glove was definitely not helping. Well, I got some good news for you, Rand. You've got Art Jimerson below the octagon. No, something better. I've got the glove that he left behind and didn't box with in the ring at UFC 1, and he's right here right now. Wow. Mr. Glove, welcome to the nosebleeds. I don't even know what we call you. You don't need to call me Mr. Anything. You could call me Dennis. Okay? okay, and can we hear this up, please? I gotta get back to North Korea. He sounds like Dennis Rodman. That's the worm. Yeah. Yeah, I sound like Dennis Rodman, and I sound like the worm, because I am Dennis Rodman, the worm. Okay. And right now, I gotta get back to Pyongyang for a Pyongyang with my BFF for life, Kim Jong-un, who is a great guy. He, he is, is not, not a great, great guy. guy. All right, he kills a lot of his own yeah. people. Look, look, man, he took me roller skating. Okay, and Luke Longley, and he gave us popcorn and okay. everything. Luke Longley. That, that's not the point, man. We're trying to find out how in the world are you Dennis Rodman and also Art Jimerson's glove. Yeah. All I know is I was selling rummy worms, which are rum-filled gummy worms, at what? Aguas Calientes Casino in Rancho Mirage, and then this dude, whatever, Jim Moran, was autographing his boxing gloves at the table next to me, and I'm like, hey, dude, and then boom, lightning struck, there was a power outage, and next thing I know, my soul jumps in his glove. Okay, I can't even wrap my head around this concept. I mean, what don't you get? It's gummy worms, but with a little bit of rum in them. It's for your kids. Okay. Well, that's well, not that, what we were talking about. And also, you can't give alcohol to kids. Yeah. Well, they're not your kids. What do you care? Okay, wait, wait. So, so right now, Dennis Rodman is walking around with a boxing glove as his soul? That actually makes a lot that of sense. That does. does. Yeah. Man, I am right here. Okay, we just want to find out why Art Jimerson would leave you behind and fight with only one glove at UFC 1. I don't know who that is. Okay. Well, that was productive. Thank you, Rodman Glove, for joining us. Uh, Rummy yeah. Worms, available at most quick trips. All right, let's head back to Denver, where Hoist, don't call him, Royce Gracie finished off Gerard to win it all. Of course. What are you going to do with the money? We're going to go to Disneyland. Why Disneyland? Yeah, Disney World's way better. Knott's Berry Farm, for fuck's sake. Uh-huh. The food's better. Yep. There's alcohol everywhere. You got it. And that bitch Snow White is nowhere to be found. Preach. $50,000. Hoist Gracie's name will be on it. Here is the Shouldn't panel. Hoist's name Hoist. already be on it? Yeah, Beautiful. they should have made two checks and then voided out Gerard's. Oh, All right, it's time for us to give out some awards. We call them the Bleedies. It's time for Bleedies. It's time to bleed. It's time for Bleedies. It's what you all need, please. I'm giving mine to Rich Goins' confidence. As a ring announcer, all he had to do was learn the intros, and yet he wouldn't take his eyes off the card. I know. It was really annoying to watch. All right, that's it for us. Thanks for joining us on the Nosebleeds. One glove, one heart. Let's get together and cash a giant novelty check. Stay bloody, people. Keep your guard up. Why would you say keep your guard because up? Because I wanted to add. Yeah, but I ended it with yeah, stay bloody. Maybe mine is better. It's not Maybe better. Is. So you don't want people to keep their guard up? Fine.